So we're just going to be building this little animation where we have an image that starts in the middle of the page and it spirals out into a circle and just repeats looping in that circle. If this interests you at all, stick around. Let's begin. So let's begin by capturing this image. We'll go here, go into the script, and we'll just say const logo is equal to document dot query selector, and we'll just capture it by the, uh, the tag name image. Let's create a function that starts the animation. We'll call this function spiral. Let's create a listener that starts the function. We'll do window. Let me scroll up just a bit. We'll say window dot add event listener. We'll listen for a key up event. When I press the key up, or excuse me, when I press the A button, we'll start the animation. So if event.key is equal to A, we'll just start the spiral function. And if I press the D key, we'll stop the animation with a cancel animation frame with an anim ID. So let's create the animation loop so formatting. So within the function, we'll just request a animation frame and all this frame or the callback's gonna do should be an equals, not a plus. All it's going to do is call the the uh, the spiral function. So we're creating a loop or a recursive function that calls the animation frame. And every frame, we get to do some code in here. We get to draw some stuff. Let's capture the ID for that frame. So we're just going to say let anim ID equal null. And then when we create the frame, we'll set it to the anim ID. There we go. So uh, capture the X and Y of this image. So we'll just do a const we'll do logo chords, we'll put in an object to keep it organized, get computed style of the logo, and the left is the X, and the Y is the top, and these guys are strings. We want to do some math with them, so we have to parse the floats. There we go. This guy as well, parse the float. All right, so we have the X and Y at the center of the image. Let's create some new X's and new Y's. So new X is equal to 0, 0.0 for now. New Y is 0, 0.0 for now. And we need some sort of seed, some sort of value that ticks up. So we do let seed equal 0, 0.0. And then every frame, we're just going to increase the seed by, let's say, seed plus equal 1. All right, so let's start by bouncing the, the image left and right. So what we're going to do is we're going to just bounce the image using a sign function. I'll show you in two seconds. We're just going to bounce the, the X axes. Let me use, what color should I use? Let's go green. There we go. It's going to bounce the X axes like this, back and forth between negative one and one for now. And then we'll increase it. I'll show you why we have to uh, increase it. So we're going to be using a sign function, this guy right here. So it starts at zero, but it reaches its apex at one right here. And it goes down to negative one and just repeats this pattern. So let's hook up the x coordinate to that. So our x is going to be equal to math.sign of the seed. And then we're just going to do this. So the logo.style.left, which is the x, is equal to some sort of new value with the, uh, the unit is pixels. And the y, which is our top, which we'll do in a second, is also pixels. So it's going to be the logo chords dot x plus our new x. We'll save, we go back here, I press the A button to start the animation, and we get this shaking back and forth. That's because of the, the vanilla or the default sign function, it bounces between one and negative one. So it's moving between one pixel and negative one pixel. Let's elongate that so we have a, a, an image that bounces like this. So we'll just say, I don't know, 50, might be too large, but we'll see what it looks like. Press A. Uh, let's go a bit larger than that. Let's go 100. Also, let's slow that down by increasing the, uh, the period of the graph. We'll just do 0 0.2 by 20%. Mm, let's go a bit longer than that, 150. And a bit slower. We'll do 0, 0 0.9. There we go. A. All right. So we have our X moving back and forth. Let's do the same thing with the Y. So we can copy this code. We can change this to new Y. Delete that, uncomment this, and then we'll say logo chords dot y plus our new y. Save. Let's just animate the y. A. All right, there we go. Let's 
animate both of them, we should have a diagonal response. All right, so why is it going diagonal? Let me fix something. So the uh, the canvas here, the x-axis is negative on the left, it's positive on the right. On the top, it's kind of counterintuitive. The negatives on the top, the bottom is positive. Let's flip that by just doing this. We're just gonna say whatever the new y is, we're just gonna multiply it by a negative one, just to flip it. So now our image should go this way instead of that way. All right, perfect. So what's going on here? Well, currently our X and our Y are following the same curve. So whenever the X is zero, our Y is zero. When the X is one, the Y is one. When the X is zero, the Y is zero. So we're getting this linear pattern or relationship between the two, uh, the two axes. What we need to do is we're going to concentrate on the extreme points in order to create a circle. When the x is 0, we want the y to be 1. When the x is 1, we want the y to be 0. When the x is negative 1, we want y 0. When x is 0 or 360 or 2 pi, we want the y to be negative 1. So we have to shift the graph. So currently this is our x and y. Let's create a new graph for our, our, our y. So we'll do g of x is equal to our sine of x. Currently, that's what they look like. They're overlapping. We want when the x is zero, we want the y, the top of this, to be at the one. So we're just going to shift this graph over by, I think it's 90 degrees. So do plus, and you can't use degrees here. Use uh, radians. We're just going to say pi over two. There we go. So now we have this relationship between the two axes, the x and the y. When x is zero, y is one. When x is one right here, y is zero. If we move over to the right, when our x is 0 again, our y is negative 1. So we have what we want here. And we're just going to let the sine curve fill in the rest. So we're going to get this circular path. Let's go back here and change that. So within this, and let's uh, put this in a separate variable. We'll call it the speed modifier. So we have to write it twice. 0, 9, was it? Yeah. Let's just say the speed modifier. And we'll do speed modifier here. And we need to shift the graph by, what was it? Pi over two for our y. So we'll do speed modifier times speed, or c, excuse me, plus the math.pi divided by 2.0. All right, let's go back to our image. Let's click on the A to start the animation. And we get the circle traveling like that. Now, pay attention to the start of this animation. So I'm going to reset it and start it, reset and start it, so you can see what I'm talking about. So I press A, and it jumps. I press A, let me refresh. I press A, and it jumps. A, and jumps. So what's going on? Why does it jump like that? Well, when we start the animation, Control-Z, all right, so when we start the animation, our x starts at zero. So our x smooths over from zero all the way to its negative one, and then back to, excuse me, it's positive one, and then to negative one, and then to positive one, negative one. So it's a smooth transition from adding zero, which is nothing, into our one and the negative one. When we start the animation on the y, we're not adding zero to begin with. We're adding one, so that's why the animation jumps up one like that. We want to smooth into the transition to one. So in order to do that, we need to create an easing function. So what is an easing function? Well, I'm going to write it. I'll take you through constructing it, and then I'll tell you how we're using it. So let me take these guys off, and we're going to start with an exponential function. I'll just say t of x is equal to base 2. The base is not that important. So base 2 to the power of x. We have an exponential function. Let me zoom out just a bit. So we have an exponential function. We're going to flip it on the y-axis. There we go. We're going to flip it on the x-axis. There we go. And we're going to create a ceiling. Currently, the asymptote for this is zero. So it comes close to zero, but it never penetrates or goes above. We want the asymptote to be one. So we're just going to add one like this. Now, if we zoom in, you're going to see the ceiling of this is a one. It gets really, really, really close to one. Can I do this? There we go. It gets really close to one, but it never quite reaches one. This is our easing function. Now, why do we construct this? Well, what happens if we take the y like this, which starts at one, but we want to ease into the full animation here. We don't want the jump from zero to one. 
what happens if we multiply these two functions? Let's say r of x is equal to g of x times our t of x. And we get this. So pay attention to the purple guy. Let me just turn off the blue. So the purple guy is a combination of our easing function and our regular uh, our y axis function right here. Notice now that the purple guy, which is our modified y, it starts at zero. This is what happens when you multiply these two functions. Because the output of our easing function is zero right here, the output of our y is one. Zero times one is zero. So when I zoom out, it creates this effect where because the easing function starts from zero and it gradually goes to one, what you could say is when you multiply a number by one, you just get that number. We gradually go from a zero into the full birth of the animation. So if I say something like this to illustrate it more, I'll do zero point zero, it was five. That's way too much. Let's just say two, not two, eight. There we go. Let's try it. So you see the, uh, the purple, let me turn the green guy off. So the easing function modified our y so that we start off at a zero and then we kind of snake in and gradually go to the, if I zoom out, the full birth of the animation somewhere around probably here. So that's all an easing function does. So it draws values down to a zero and it eases into the full birth of the animation. So let's apply this guy right here to our y guy right here in our code. We'll see what we get. Let's go back to the code. Let easing function equal, and that was a math.pow of base two, and negative 0, 0.0, what do we decide on? Let's try 0, 0.8. Let's take that to a different variable, just like the speed modifier. We're just gonna say the, uh, let's say the easing, easing modifier, 0, 0.08, 0, 0.08. So we can take that away from here. It's a negative, so we'll just do negative here. We'll do, easing modifier, there we go. And then we added one, and it was a negative two base. We can't put negative two here, or it screws with the code. So we need to multiply the whole thing here by negative 1.0. 1.0 times math.pow, and we forgot the seed, times our seed. All right, so let's just add that to the, rather multiply that with the, uh, the new y. So let's say new y is equal to the new y times our easing function. Save, we go back, press A, and there we go. Let's slow that down so we can see it a bit better. Let's go 0 0.02, and we'll apply it to the X as well. So new X, let me put this above the Y. New X is equal to new X times our easing function. Save, we go back, I press the A, and we get this effect where we spiral out until we can reach the full birth of the animation, and then we just trace a regular circle. So that's gonna be it. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you guys in the next one.